Hello, Elizabeth here, and today I'm going to show you how to make Spice Star labels using your Cricut machine. I just dump paprika all over my pants. My spices were an absolute mess in my pantry, and I'm so happy with how organized they are now. My friend Megan generously gifted me these spice jars when she got a new set, and a lot of the labels were for spices that I didn't have, and there weren't labels for a lot of the spices that I did have. So I thought this would be the perfect project for my Cricut. First, I removed all of the old labels by gently scraping the edge with an old gift card and peeling them off. Then I used Dawn Power Wash and a wet cloth to clean the sticky residue. If you haven't tried Dawn Power Wash, it's freaking awesome. They don't sponsor me or anything. I just really like the product. Next, I designed my labels in Cricut Design Space. As much as I love a pretty cursive, I wanted a font that would be nice and easy to read, so I decided on this font called American Typewriter. I also decided to do it vertically on the bottle instead of horizontally so that I can see the full name when the bottle is facing forward. American Typewriter is a font that's built into Cricut Design Space, so I created the labels using the text tool on the canvas. For the spices that had two words, I did them in two separate text boxes so I could space them exactly how I wanted to. Then I used the alignment tool to perfectly align them to the left side. Once you have your two boxes spaced how you want them, you wanna make sure you select both layers and click the attach button to group the words together as one label. If you skip this step of attaching them together, the words will be arranged in different spots on your mat when you go to make the cut. My canvas was set to display in inches from my previous project, but I wanted centimeters for this one, so I just went into the settings and changed it from imperial to metric. I measured the space for the labels on my jars to be about six centimeters. So once I had all my labels ready to go, I just selected each one and changed the width to six centimeters in the toolbar. Depending on the length of the word, some of them looked too big at six centimeters. For example, once I saw cinnamon and rosemary at six centimeters, I realized that curry powder and chili powder needed to be a bit smaller. So I resized everything as I went to keep them looking as consistent as possible and just made sure that nothing was larger than six centimeters or else they wouldn't fit in the space on the bottles. Once you're happy with the size of everything, you're ready to make your cut. When you hit make it, Cricut Design Space will automatically arrange each of your labels in a way that will save the most space so you don't waste too much vinyl. They were a little too close together for my liking, so I shifted them around just a little bit to give me a little more room to cut them out and apply my transfer tape. I used Cricut brand removable vinyl for this project. I thought I might want to change the labels in the future, so this will be easier to remove than permanent vinyl. The labels also won't be going through constant use and washing like a cup or a mug would, so the removable vinyl should hold up just fine until I'm ready to change out the labels. I can see in my cut preview that everything will be in the top 10 centimeters of my mat, so I'm using my mat to measure and then cutting my sheet of vinyl following the lines printed on the back to keep it nice and straight. Then I applied the vinyl to my standard grip mat and used my scraper to make sure there were no bubbles. Then you wanna select the vinyl setting for your base material and make sure you have your fine point blade installed in tool slot A, load your mat and start the cut. Your machine has a lot of work to do with all these tiny letters, so this will take a few minutes. Here's what the cuts looked like after unloading my mat. Now at this point, normally you would weed the design by removing all the excess vinyl around the letters and picking out the little cutouts inside the P's and the B's and the A's. But I kept seeing people suggest a technique called reverse weeding when you have a very detailed project to weed. You can look up videos of this technique, but essentially you put your transfer tape on top before you weed anything, and then you remove the backing from the vinyl and then peel the excess vinyl off the transfer tape instead of off the backing. And it's supposed to remove the inner pieces along with the outer pieces really easily. I should have tested this with something small first because this did not work well for me and I made a ton of extra work for myself. So I applied my transfer tape to the entire piece of vinyl and then cut out each label. And the idea with reverse weeding is that you run your scraper along both the front and the back 
and then you just peel off the excess vinyl and it all magically comes off and only leaves your tiny little letters on the transfer tape. I had a really hard time removing the excess vinyl. It was really hard to pick the corner of it up and once I got a grip of it, it was tricky to peel and it kept ripping and leaving a bunch of pieces behind. Not the magic I saw in the other videos. And then to get the inner pieces of the letters, I had to bend the transfer tape to lift the edges of them and stick my weeding tool under to pop them out. I did get it done. It took me a while, but I got there. Once you have your label weeded and applied to your transfer tape, you want to clean your surface with rubbing alcohol and then line up your label onto the spice jar wherever you want to place it. I like to use my scraper to make sure those fine details are really pressed onto the bottle before peeling off my transfer tape. As you can see, the tiny little stick of one of the letter P's popped up there. I just popped it back on with my thumb and gave it a bit more pressure with the scraper. No harm done. I struggled through that weeding process on every single one of my bottles, but in the end, my labels weren't ruined. Everything worked out just fine. I just think it would have been much faster with the traditional weeding technique. If you've managed to figure out reverse weeding, please drop a comment and help a girl out. And voila, here is the final product. I'm so happy with how they turned out. They are gorgeous and so much more organized than the sad pile of baggies I used to call a spice collection. I hope this video helped you. If you'd like to see some more Cricut tutorials, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to see next. See you later.